Sometimes researchers find a new fossil that kind of challenges what we thought we knew about different organisms and their evolution. This is actually especially true of certain things with size. For example, certain body plans just can't reach certain sizes. Mammals, for example, could never be as small as the smallest of the lizards, Burgensia, and that's because a small mammal that small would lose all of its heat too quickly, so it would freeze to death and then die. At the same time, mammals on land at least also can't reach the massive sizes of the dinosaurs because they can't just dump a bunch of eggs somewhere. They have to actually grow the young inside of their body and that takes a lot of time, so they can't get those same massive sizes. But in the water, mammals, and specifically whales, can reach massive sizes. Especially when you look at things like the blue whale, the largest ever animal. It would have been heavier than the largest dinosaurs, at least based on what we currently think about their sizes. But when we consider the evolutionary process that led to the blue whale, it really only evolved pretty recently. It wasn't like it was some long lineage of giant whales that had existed for millions of years maybe a few million at most, with these just being the most recent examples of the blue whale. We don't have a strong fossil record for whales that large. Or at least we didn't have a good fossil record for whales that large, because now there's a new one, and it's massive, and it comes from Peru, having been named Perucetus colossus. It was found from sediments dating to the middle of the Eocene, so about 30 million years before the first blue whales would have ever evolved. So there's this much longer history of giant whales apparently. However, Perucetus wasn't directly related to any of the modern whales, even the blue whale. Instead it was a separate lineage called the Bacillosaurids. The Bacillosaurids were fairly common large whales early on in their evolution, and include things like Bacillosaurus. Bacillosaurus though is basically an eel with flippers. It's not quite as complex and as deep of a body as you would expect from something like a modern day whale. It's very, very skinny and thin-bodied. That's where Perucetus is really, really interesting, because it's not a complete fossil. It's some vertebra, parts of the pelvis, and then also some ribs, but they're really, really chunky pieces. In fact, when you actually look at the ribs and especially the backbone, you can see that there's some pretty big differences from even modern-day large whales like the blue whale. Cynthiacetus pruvanius was another bacillosaur that would have lived around the same time as Perucetus. And when you look at it, its vertebrae are actually a lot more similar to the blue whales than they are to Perucetus, but it was also a bacillosaur. It would have been pretty closely related to Perucetus. So even among the bacillosaurids, Perucetus is this huge outlier. And these bones aren't necessarily lightly built. They are very dense, in fact. Some of them were damaged just by burial processes, but that means researchers could look inside them very easily. And they're dense, they aren't porous, there's not really air sacs or a lot of blood flow moving through the bone. That would have added a lot of weight to this animal, and probably was used in order to help it maintain its proper buoyancy for what it needed in the water column. But those dense bones then would have also added a lot of weight to it, meaning that when the researchers scaled up essentially all of the bones and estimated how much it would have weighed, it could potentially have weighed more than the blue whale, the, again, heaviest animal to ever live on the planet, or at least potentially. There is some error in this because we don't have a perfect fossil of Perucetus, but there is a chance it could have been heavier than a blue whale. There's also a chance it could have been lighter than a blue whale. And Perucetus was probably doing something pretty different from the blue whale, because from what we know, blue whales are basically going out into the open ocean and eating large schools of small fish or shrimp or squid or whatever they can filter feed successfully. It doesn't seem like Perucetus would have been doing that. Instead, it seems like it would have mostly been hanging around shallow waters, and that's based on the bones, which are actually really dense, very similar to the ways that Serenian's bones are. Serenians are things like manatees and dugongs, and they live in shallow water, so it's pretty likely that Perucetus also lived in shallow water. As for the large size, it's possible that Perucetus was actually feeding along the bottom of the ocean, and large size can actually help animals stay down for longer, so it could have aided in feeding. Now, this means a couple of things. One, it could have potentially fed like dugongs and manatees on seagrasses, but that would also make it the only known herbivorous whale, which would be a bit strange, so that's not super likely, and we don't have a skull, so we can't really test it based on the teeth. Alternatively, it could have actually done something a bit like gray whales do, where gray whales will suck up massive mouthfuls of sand and mud, use the water to essentially force all of that out of its mouth, and then eat whatever was living under that sand and mud. It's possible it was doing something similar, and 
If not, it was probably just instead going around and eating hard crustaceans and other things living on the bottom of the ocean. But it is really interesting to understand that it's really, really bizarre, was similar size to a blue whale and just wasn't doing anything similar to it. When combined with our knowledge of the very eel-like narrow body of things like Bacillosaurus, it makes sense that the Bacillosaurids were probably very well adapted for near shore environments. They were great at hanging out in the shallows, which is unfortunate because the planet started to cool and that meant that some of the oceans started to recede away from the coasts. And sure, there'd still be coasts, just less of them, which would have made it really hard for the Bacillosaurids to be as successful as they were. This potentially is the main contributor to their extinction. And then later the ancestors of modern day whales were able to start filling in those niches because the bacillosaurs weren't there anymore. So their adaptations to shallow waters made them successful for a time, but not for all of time, which is why we don't have anything like Perusitas around today, which is unfortunate. It would be really nice to see what it was doing because it's just such a bizarre animal with these really, really dense bones and hanging around in the shallows.